Hello everybody, I'm Madame Sensei. I teach Spanish, French, and Japanese out here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. And in our last episode, I started talking about re-envisioning expert groups to work with a secondary classroom. So I've been looking at guided language acquisition development, been through a couple of, of trainings for it, and it's really invented for elementary schools how can I make this work in a secondary classroom environment? I have ninth graders through 12th graders. So um, last video was getting kind of long, so I chopped it in half. This is part 1B, and I'm going to talk about a specific expert group that I started with. And this is our old friend, the Kagan Technique, Quiz Quiz Trade, which I honestly love to pieces because I think I can get rid of all the worksheets and just do this for 10 minutes a day and my students know things to a greater depth than if I were handing out worksheets to them. So in Quiz Quiz Trade, you've got the two people. Well, everyone gets a card. I'll explain it more in detail, but you see they each one has a card in their hand. They're reading off the card. They're asking each other the question on the card, and then they're gonna trade, and I will show you how this works. So, um, so the first thing I do is I go through my unit, and I think, what do I wanna teach the student? Okay, and this is kind of like the baked potato what's the the bare minimum that they need to know and what are the more fun things that are nice to sprinkle in so i go through a unit and i write down 31 32 questions that come from the unit okay because i normally have 31 32 students per class next year i'm going to have 36 so i guess i'm going to have to go back and add some questions but um, like my French one and Spanish one classes at the time were working on their likes and dislikes. So it was very easy to just say, uh, do you like pizza? How often do you eat pizza? Do you eat pizza with your friends? Do you like to eat pizza with your friends? And that kind of stuff. And um, here in this example, uh, my French classes were working on restaurant vocabulary. And so you'll notice also I give them some scaffolding as we start up. Okay. so. The first person will ask, what do you recommend to me? And the second person has to answer, I recommend to you, blah, blah, blah. So that scaffolding I build in in the early stages, and I will show you. Now, um, I print it really large font, uh, you know, maybe like 46 point or whatever, and that makes the document about 10 pages long. And then I go down to the workroom and I copy it on cardstock so that I have it forever. Now, I've been doing this a while, so I learned that if I make it really super big, then I just slice, slice, it's so much easier for me to cut out than if I make tiny little cards and I have to cut those out. And I'd much rather just spend my time creating games than cutting things out. So uh, I'd rather have it be, you know, like a, a they say you spend 80% of your time doing, um, no, you'd spend 20% of your time doing 80% of the work. There we go. 20% of your time doing 80% of the work and 80% of your time doing that last 20% to make it beautiful. And I'd rather spend 20% of my time doing an 80% job so that I can rush it out to my students. I, sub perfection is fine with me. Okay. So I, it doesn't matter that all the cards are not the same size. They were quick for me to cut out and the students can use them. So here, obviously, I didn't learn my lesson at this point when I took this picture, but these are tiny cards, okay? And they took me a long time to um, to cut out. But anyway, this guy's gonna go up to her and say, uh, uh, what's for dinner? And she's gonna answer however she wants. Maybe there's some scaffolding there, so when she gets stuck, he can show her the scaffolding or walk her through the scaffolding. Um, so she's gonna answer however she wants, and then she asks her question, which is, uh, where do you like to eat lunch? Okay, and then he's gonna answer. So that's the quiz quiz part. Now they trade cards and they turn around and they find two other people to talk to. So each card is gonna make its way around the room maybe three times in 15 minutes. I normally only let it go for 10 minutes. Um, the main problems I have is that because of class dynamics, and coming out of the pandemic, we've got some really socially anxious students. I find that they will, some classes, not all, I've got some classes that just eat this up and it's like one week. And I'm like, okay, you guys have mastered all these words. We can start playing games now. Other classes, um, I find that they bubble up 
that they'll be like, oh, you're my friend and I only want to talk to you. And so they trade the same card back and forth 20 times amongst three or four people. Or they have a tendency to try to start whispering in English or whatever. So I always put myself in the game. So when, when I show you a video, it's not a very good video because I took a little bit and then I put myself in the game. And that way I work around the room. They know I'm coming to them. They know I'm listening to them. That's my formative assessment right there. And it's fun. And I get to hear how they're pronouncing things and I get to hear how well they're doing. And it's, it's a really good formative assessment for me. So sometimes with a couple of my classes, I have to announce, okay, I, and the target language, of course, find someone you haven't spoken to yet today. Find someone wearing the same color shoes as you. Turn back to back with the person you're talking to. Walk to the next person that you see. You know, I need to give them some more explicit instructions or else they'll just clump together. What I really, really love about this and why I think this qualifies as an expert group, even though it's just a sentence and it's not me calling them over to my table, you can hear the students becoming experts on their sentence. You pass them out. And the very first time they're going to be like, wait, I don't know what this word means. And they'll come to you and they'll say, como dit en blah, blah, blah en anglais, qu'est-ce que ça veut dire, uh, blah, 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 uh, como se dice, you know, quare wa non desca, ego de, whatever language you're teaching, they'll come to you and they'll ask you and then you tell them and then they go off and you can hear them telling the next person, this is what this means. And especially as I write some scaffolding on there for the first couple of times, that person who's holding the card at that moment is an expert on the card. And then they ask their question, they get their answer, they trade their cards, and when the next person asks them the question, maybe they don't know some of the words, so they ask that person, what does that mean? Uh, you know, and so that person will explain to them, and then they're both experts and they turn around and find new people. And they're pretty good about not walking off until they know exactly what's on their card. After a few days, you can see I removed the scaffolding. Um, sometimes some lessons, some units are harder than others, and I might leave the scaffolding on for a week. But generally after three days, I can remove a lot of the scaffolding. But wow, this is so much more effective for me than a worksheet. So I'm about to show you a video. It's a bad video because I just took a couple of seconds of it. And just to show you the trade part, and I didn't want to show my students' faces, so it's low. And then I put myself into the fray, because why should the students have all the fun? I should be playing games with them, too. So here is the video. I'm not showing your faces. I mean, hola. Ah, solo socio. Gracias. Hola. Uh, <laughs> oh, you know, I'm demonstrating how this works. Yo, oh, you probably not use us though. Bueno. Um, Okay, 
Okay, so in the next episode, I'm going to tell you another experiment I did with this whole concept of expert groups. And again, if you want a printed version of all my thoughts and, and why I chose to look at things this way or that way, you can go to studio-nemo.com for a free copy of my book, that uh, The Glad Book, or go to the Duolingo Educators Network. I've also got it linked there. And I just basically muse on everything I'm doing with what I learned from my GLAD training classes, because we know that one of the best ways to actually process information is to try to explain it to someone else, right? All right, so hope to see you there or comment on this video, of course. All right, see you on the next time.